One zettabyte is equivalent to 1 billion terabytes. And by 2023, there are around 120 zettabytes of data created. Just as big as that amount of data is, it is also messy and difficult to deal with. Fortunately, a single company doesn't usually have to deal with such an enormous amount of data. There are ways to automate and ease up its cleaning and transformation process to make the most out of the data they need. This is useful for business intelligence and analytics, for example. Today, we will talk about data pipelines, how they work, the processes that usually happen inside them and their benefits. A data pipeline works precisely like a water pipeline. It takes raw and messy data to a more organized and clean final location, making it more accessible for different purposes. Everything starts with data producers. These could look like databases, applications, files, events, social media, and many others. This data can come in a variety of formats and types of information and to organize it, standardize it, and make it overall more accessible and valuable, it is very common to follow a data pipeline with an ETL process. ETL stands for extracting, transforming, and loading data. It's pretty self-explanatory. The data is extracted from various sources, then it is transformed, cleaned, standardized, and it is finally loaded wherever it's needed. I must clarify that ETL is not the only pipeline that exists. There are some cases in which the transformation is done after the data is loaded on its new location. There are even some not so common processes in which the data is not transformed at any moment of the pipeline. But let's go back to ETL for now. An impressive number of sources constantly create data that can contribute to the company's progress and alignment with its current necessities. The first thing a data pipeline can help us with is collecting all the data so it's easier to find in a single place. The data can now be transformed once it has been collected. In this process, the idea is to clean it up, debug it, deduplicate it, eliminate errors, and so on. Usually the data ends up in a structured data storage, meaning it will need format adjustments to fit with the format and organization of its final destination. As you can assume, doing this manually with considerable amounts of data could be highly time consuming. That's why a pipeline's automation is extremely useful and nowadays expected. Once the data has been extracted and transformed, it can be loaded in, let's say, a data warehouse. It can then be used for business intelligence, reports, or data visualization, or machine learning, since this process needs significant amounts of high-quality data. All of the final processes in which data can be used after going through the pipeline are called data consumers. The data pipeline is everything that had to happen in between to take the data, make it usable, and deliver it to where it was needed. There are two main ways in which data is processed. The first is batch processing, in which the pipeline processes large amounts of data or batches on specific schedules. The processing tends to be programmed during off-peak working hours, not to overload the system. The second one is stream processing. In this one, data is processed as soon as it's created or recognized. Here, the data is constantly flowing all the time. Both are used for different situations, and hybrid pipelines are becoming more common with time. Each of these has its specific procedures. For example, there are particular engines for batch processing like Spark or MapReduce, and some others for stream processing like Apache Kafka or Apache NiFi. Batch processing is commonly used with significant amounts of less time-sensitive data. It can be used for end-of-day or monthly reports to give you an example. Meanwhile, stream processing is more used for data that needs to be updated all the time, like stock market data, web traffic, etc. Nonetheless, there might be times when one type of data must be contrasted with the other or in situations where microbatching is used. Microbatching can work almost as fast as stream processing while reducing some processing costs if the immediacy of stream processing is beneficial but not paramount. Data pipelines are crucial for productivity. They ease the process of collecting and cleaning data to let the experts concentrate on the most essential part of the job, discovering meaningful insights for their company. A data pipeline ensures the quality and organization of crucial data, which also means that it needs to be constantly optimized and checked to ensure the quality of the processes in the pipeline. The best way to understand how a data pipeline works and how to implement it is by the hand of an expert. At Turing College, you'll learn how to use data pipelines in real time with top professionals who interact with them regularly thanks to their job and expertise. If you're interested in a data-related career, you can look at our certified high-quality programs on our webpage. Just click the link in the description to take the first step into becoming a data professional. I hope this video helps you understand data pipelines, how they work, and why they are beneficial. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. That's been it for today. Thank you for watching.